Uh, okay, it's day four now. Five? Day five. Right, I've lost track of the days. <laughs> uh, being isolated, it's pretty weird just because, you know, I'm used to being isolated. I don't go out much, I don't talk to many people, I just tend to keep to myself apart from, you know, uh, teaching and uh, working at the range. Um, I don't really do much, but, you know, having to be forced to stay inside now has been a little, uh, bit weird, you know, like you choose to be alone, that's okay, but when you're forced to be alone, huh. So, uh, it's interesting, so, I'm a little demotivated, I've got a few things to work on, a few video scripts and ideas, uh, but the, the motivation's been a little low, I think uh, the, the cabin fever is setting in, I mean, just to illustrate how, um, how uh, miserable things are. I'm playing Minecraft again. <laughs> nothing, nothing bad with that, but kind of struck me low. I'm enjoying. I'm, I'm having fun, of course, but who would have thought? Um, otherwise, uh, I have, by the way, managed to uh, compile my list of bows. I've been putting it off for the last few years, and people have been asking what bows do you have. I finally have made a list of bows, and I think. Most of them are there. I might be missing one or two because I can't find them or they're in a different place. Um, not all of them are immediately available to me right now. I've left some at the club uh, for temporary storage to loan the club. Um, but I've got about 30 here. But uh, today we have the Southwest Scorpion. This was requested by uh, some of the fans. Uh, this is one of my pet favorites. Very simple laminate longbow. I've already reviewed it in the past. Very beautiful tiger stripe design, uh, very quiet bow, very simple to use. This one's about 40 pound, it is. Uh, and I'm using basically all my arrows, so uh, they're roughly spine, they're not going to be perfect, but again, for what 10 meter shooting in the backyard, it should be okay. So we're going to have fun with this bow. I'll try and position myself in the right frame this time. Um, again, these long bows are quite hard to fit in compared to the compact bows. And uh, we'll see how we go with this, have a bit of fun. We're starting a little late today, it's about 6 o'clock and it would normally start probably like maybe 2 or 3. But uh, it's a little toast today, uh, reaching the end of the warmish season. And daylight savings is going to hit pretty soon. So we'll make the most of the daylight as much as we can. And let's fling some arrows. Gonna be good there, yep, alright. Let's have some shots. Okay, that works. <laughs> First, it's always calibrating. Just gonna find the aim point. So every bow is slightly different, of course. Let's try the Alibo carbon. And it's not quite the same spine, but it's so close. Yeah, but it flies the same this distance. So, uh, I mean, these are really nice arrows and so cheap too. Nice. Must have a little upright shooting wall bow style. <laughs> Oh, we call it battle style when it comes to Eastern archery because if Eastern style you tend to uh, lead into a shot a lot more uh, whereas if target style you tend to be more upright so we're shooting a light bow so shoot target style oh, that, flies, that flies really nicely yeah, just combine all my arrows together and, uh, and I've got well, I didn't count how many arrows I have right because that can tell me how many shots I've done because if we get a hundred a day it's pretty good it's mild light practice and I'm not particularly training a particular skill, but it gets me shooting. And 100 a day is a nice goal. I'm not forcing yourself to go too far out of your way. I'm not being too lazy or you're not counting for anything. And 100 is about, you know, just under an hour of uh, regular shooting and practice. And again, when you shoot a lot of this, you don't really keep track of how much time you spend shooting. You end up being quite tired at the end, which is good. It's good exercise. Oh, did Mitch how good his bow is? <laughs> I remember the only thing I, I um I found a little uncomfortable was the grip is a little too straight, so a lot a lot of shooting, you start feeling a bit of cramp on the fingers, but you know when you're first starting out. Such a nice bow to use. So it is really, really quiet. Oh, nice.
Oh, a beautiful flight. Gee, when I'm tired, I've got 21 arrows in my quiver. And, uh, you know, if I shoot like five um, ends, that's 100 arrows. So, yeah, things really get away from you when you're having fun. And the archery is such an individual immersive sport that you don't pay attention to what you're, you're doing. It's just so cleansing. So, <laughs> that explains my fatigue. And this is every day. And it's just on camera as well. So, that explains a lot. All right, we're good here, looking good. There we go, nice and clean flight. Beautiful, just maintain back tension, keep the expansion going. Beautiful. I had a question from a viewer from the last video. Uh, do I use KSL when shooting other bows? The answer is not really. The, the principles apply. So the idea of uh, draw, expansion, holding, they can work as well. So you can mentally apply the same steps. Uh, the physical process is more fine-tuned for target shooting, but you can, you can apply it to any other style of archery. Just the way you acquire the skill. So, for example, I didn't learn KSL, we're doing Asiatic, so I conceptualize it differently. Whereas when I shoot Olympic style, I can go through the steps a lot more cleanly. So I can do it through holding, expand, and you know go through all the steps as I've done before. So the Concept of KSL is more mental rather than physical, but definitely the, all the principles still apply. So you can go through, you know, set up position, then load, anchor, and then expand, but um, I kind of blend in a more natural flow. I might have a few triggers, but I don't really think about it as much. But uh, a good shot is pretty much universal. I think a lot of people spend too much time kind of splitting hairs between what one coach says and what one style says. In the end, you kind of blend in for what you're shooting, the most effective method. That is repeatable. And each person will mentally focus on a different thing in their shot process depending on what they need in that time and place. So for a lot of people, it might be to get a full draw and a good anchor. For me, the thing I'm slipping when I tend to shoot, especially um, their bow, I tend to pull back more than push forward. So I'm trying to remember to activate this muscle group when I'm executing a shot. So I tend to be more of a uh, push forward bias because I tend to be a bit too much on the rear side. So to compensate, I push forward a bit more. But that is actually but more equal. So that will help me get a, a straighter flight because otherwise I'll be yanking it, plucking the string, pulling it, dropping the bow arm. So pushing forward is what I try to remember when I finish the shot. Nice. Should note that loading from the left side isn't that slow. I'm not making that to be like, oh, it's really clumsy, you're gonna come across this side and move your fingers. It's a really natural motion. Once you do it enough, you're just putting hairs when you can't tell how fast you can load. I mean, I'm not speed shooting with this. But it's not half as bad as what people make it out to be. See? And uh, just to prove the point, I'm just going to do some continuous shooting. So we do 20 straight, not 21 straight, without really focusing too much on precision. But we hit the target, and we just see how, how smooth we can get this. Again, speed shooting isn't the key. It's not the objective. But if you are making the point about how awkward it is to load on the left side, or the near side, um, it may be overplayed. 
So we're not timing, not rushing, this is just continual shooting. So I've got a, a leaf in the way, so I'll step backwards just a bit here. Aim the camera back just a bit. We've got a clean view there, we've got target, good. So it's just a bit of shooting and plunk away. I probably want to have some good technique too, so I'm not going to rush the shot and speed shoot. I'm going to hit the target. Give me the push forward with the front arm. See? Not rushing the shot, not speeding, just shooting briskly. And that's touching arrows. Only 10 meters of course, or less than that. But it's not as slow as some people might make it out to be. And it's just the, the slow method going through the bow. And not really going fast either. Just gonna thread through slowly, control, repeatable process. And we're on target. Now this is a lot bow of course. We can mostly focus on the loading speed or the knocking speed. There's no reason why this method should be automatically considered slower. I'm not timing this, I have no doubt how fast this is. This is just 20 straight. Not two and one straight arrows. You can see a timestamp for yourself, not rushing this. I'm talking while I'm shooting too, so obviously multitasking a bit. Not really aiming either. And then missed that last knock. Cool. That last shot made a good one. There you go, that's 21. It's, it's not fast, but it's not slow. And in most cases, the, the thing that slows you down is the draw and the execution, not the, the loading. The loading is only like a few seconds. Um, and, you know, to be fair, um, a fairly brisk, continuous pace is around five seconds per arrow. Um, if you want to speed it, it might be three. So um, the fastest shooters would go with three per shot from a quiver. Um, but five or six is a pretty fast pace as it is. And there's no inherent disadvantage to shooting from the left. Again, the main thing slowing people down is taking care of the draw and aiming and execution. So we're doing our continuous 20, but uh, we'll execute each shot briskly. So not rushing the shot and collapsing and half drawing. We're just gonna go through and execute clean shots, which are on target and come out nicely. And so we come out to be about five seconds per shot at a brisk pace. A fly something flew past my head. <laughs> Just felt the sound next to my ear. And by the way, this isn't necessarily good practice. That's why I don't like speed shooting. Just want to feel a shot. You want to make sure your technique is good. You want to get that good feeling. And people shooting too quickly often lose this feeling. You get a lot of arrows down range might all be on target but have you really done archery if you haven't been paying attention to what you've been doing and I find honestly sometimes people who sh should be progressing a lot quicker in archery tend to slow down a bit and reach um, dead ends or hurdles because they focus only on setting arrows down range and not on technique not on training, not on self-improvement, just flinging arrows down and passively becoming better. And passive isn't the same as actively trained to become better. And people can become better. But all we're doing is just sending arrows down range, just spamming arrows. What are you really learning? Loose tip there, slow down. And there is a bit of fun in shooting quickly, but you know, I've got a slight dispersed grouping, 
And if I slow it down, could it be more accurate? They're good enough, so I'm accurate, but not as precise as it could be. And this time we're going to shoot a bit slower. So, it's a bit of a contrast, we stunt speed shooting, we're on target, but let's uh, slow down and feel each shot correctly. I'm not going to rush the shot, it's going to focus on good form, good anchor, expand, doesn't matter where it hits, but we'll slow it down and enjoy each shot this time. And accuracy is about the same actually, but I'm focusing a bit more. It's very easy, it's very tempting to rush the next shot, especially when the previous one feels good. Ah, uh, Robin Hooded. Crap. Which arrow was it? Well, that's a bit of a shame because uh, actually I actually like these um, traditionals, so uh, that's the hit there. Uh, well, it's kind of substandard, but... Well, there wasn't that many arrows either. If I shot 20 and hit more, that's fine, but that's like 6. So, a little disappointed, but... Oh well, I guess uh, we have the quarantine attrition. I guess people are often fascinated what happens. You can see the uh, knock has been shoved right in. So the arrow's gone. Uh, the flexions could be salvageable, the tip definitely can, but the shaft and knock are busted. So, yeah, that's what happens when you shoot the way I do. <laughs> well, now we have exactly 20 arrows in our quiver. Just to ease the count up. And if I end up breaking more arrows, I guess that's gets to mean more business for the archery uh, shops after the uh, quarantine is over. Because <laughs> they need your business. There's no doubt that uh, there's a lot of uh, um, negative impacts because of the shutdowns. So there's no in-store shopping, people mostly ordering online, but the lack of uh, you know, workforce and the lack of demand might be really hard for many stores. I know one of my local ranges has um, put up a GoFundMe page to support them through this hard time. Um, so be be wary of your local clubs, your local shops. Um, they might be having a hard time now, and um, like especially after things end, where if and when they do, or when they do, um, they might need a lot of help bouncing back. So um, it's affecting a lot of people. Some of us are more fortunate than others, but uh, don't forget that people are having a hard time across the board. So um, I've already donated my month's um, earnings from YouTube to uh, Arrows Plus, which is down in Point Cook. I've been there about like three times in my career, so it's not like, a frequent joint I go to, but it's a good, bunch of good people there. They've been involved in um, club and state level. Um, a lot of our local club members go there as well. And it's um, really important to support each other, especially as a community. I'm pushing it dangerously close to getting another Robin Hood today. Ooh, string slap. Oh, slip there. Straight shot though, but uh, I'm starting to get a, a little haste in the shot. That's one of the things of speed shooting. I was shooting quickly, I was shooting subconsciously or unconsciously. Um, you tend to autopilot and things slip and you don't realize it. And that's actually one of the factors affecting performance. One of the frustrating things sometimes, and you don't realize it. But because you shut your mind off, which is a good thing for most people, but for some people, you shut it off, and because you're not paying attention, you end up shooting sloppier and sloppier. So you need to reset sometimes, and focus on good technique.
pushing it. <laughs> been watching this to the end so far did you notice it's been over 100 arrows see how fast it goes i mean i can tell by the uh, the fading light it's been a bit of time so we've been shooting fairly briskly and we've just gone past 100 and that's not a long session by any means you can go through easily you know 200 even 300 arrows in a session that's about like three or four hours long but this is back out shooting there's less time fetching arrows but you can go through quite quickly and if anything that should be a, a nice motivation for you to set goals uh, on how many arrows you want to go through in each session we've got it's just a bit here it's because there's a, a branch in the way there we go so we'll do one more we'll finish up on a on high maybe not another rubber hood huh be mentally sloppy beautiful let's try and push it out straight forward then my well, grip's okay I think when I used to shoot this I used to grip it too much down here so the bumpiness is still awkward it is a different kind of grip and I think if you hold it a certain way and I, I hold more target style off to the side you feel the pressure point right there as so if you hold it like that it tends to be more down your wrist here. So the first time I shot this, it was a little, uh, a little awkward after a while. Got a few cramps here, but I'm doing okay. So once I squeeze that, push forward, comes up pretty well, and uh, I don't feel tired at the moment. So yeah, just you know, watch how you grip this. So that's a very nice bow. Very, very nice. Definitely a fun bow to take and shoot. A fun long bow. You can definitely perform with it. Look at it. <laughs> so it's a nice quiet bow. And the right hands, definitely capable. There we go, right in the middle of the group. Oh yeah, a little high. That's the thing instinctive is that <laughs> the moment you start thinking about it, you miss. Everything's just kind of programmed in, you don't think about it. Be sloppy. Okay. Yeah, a little off there, but you know, with that kind of grouping, can't ask much more than that. So that's the bow of the day, the Southwest Scorpion Longbow. Beautiful bow, remains one of my favorites. Nice mid-range price, but uh, a nice comfortable bow, nice and quiet, really easy to use and great feedback as well. Uh, and of course it looks amazing. So uh, yeah, that's the bow for day five. Now up to you. What's the next bow? I'd suggest or guess. Um, I've posted the link to my bow collection in the description below so you can see which ones I've marked off and which ones I haven't. Depending how long our shutdown lasts, we might go through all the bows, we might not, so post your thoughts below. Anyway, this is New Sensei, stay safe wherever you are and I'll see you next time.